Okay, thank you, Chris, and also thank you for the invitation. And today I'm going to talk about our work on global uh, soil moisture data simulation and also its contribution to the uh, data simulation to soil moisture estimates. I would like to thank my co-authors, uh, Dr. Wade Crow and uh, Rolf Riley. So as we all know, soil moisture is a very important variable in the Earth's Earth system. And uh, it's a very important water stress for both evapotranspiration and also uh, the vegetation itself. Therefore, soil moisture is a link between global water, energy, and the carbon cycles. And, uh, and, uh, and of course, when we look at large-scale problems, in-situ sensors are limited in space. And in fact, since the 1980s, we have a lot of uh, remote sensing missions, satellite missions, in measuring soil moisture. And in particular, after 2015, we have a newer L-band uh, SMAP mission, which provides better soil moisture observations over the globe. And usually, the unbiased root mean square error is less than 0 0.04. However, when we look at uh, the time series, SMAP still have uh, quite some data gaps and also some noise. And therefore, there's a level four product in the SMAP mission, which assimilates uh, the SMAP branch temperature into a land surface model using the common filter, a simple common filter. And this gives us the nine kilometer spatial and temporally continuous three hourly soil moisture product for both surface and the root zone. And the many studies have demonstrated that this product has improved accuracy relative to the raw SMAP data and have been used a lot in hydrological analysis. However, we do know that the efficiency or the accuracy of a data simulation system is affected by many factors. For, for example, in the paper by Wade Crow 2006, and he demonstrated that uh, if we make the, the error assumptions of the, of the observation and the model error incorrectly, we are very likely to get an optimal result, in optimal results. And uh, for some extreme cases, data simulation can even get the results worse. So which means that we'd better not to do data simulation if we do it wrong. And of course, a burning question for the SMAP level four product, or probably for all the land data simulation systems, is to understand the contribution of SMAP data simulation. And this has been done a lot by the SMAP level four team, primarily based on the uh, SMAP core size or dense soil moisture networks. And here are the maps of the SMAP networks. And although we can quantify the contribution of data simulation, however, we cannot really generalize our conclusion over the entire globe. And therefore, the goal of this study is to uh, analyze how to evaluate the contribution of data simulation at a global scale. So let's look at the equation first. And we can quantify the contribution of data simulation using this RR metric. And the nominator, nominator here is the correlation of level four with the unknown true soil moisture. Level four is the soil moisture after data simulation and it divided by the correlation of open loop with the unknown truth. And open loop here is the case without data simulation. And uh, when RR value is larger than one, it means that level four product is better, meaning data simulation improves our soil moisture skills. And if the RR is less than one, it means that data simulation is degrading soil moisture estimates of the open loop. After some math, we can simplify this equation as this term here. So the nominator here is the variance of the truth, the true soil moisture plus the error terms of the open loop divided by the variance of the truth and the uh, error of the level four product. Of course, we do not know the truth at a global scale, but we do have independent, independent soil moisture products. For example, the ASCAD in this case. 
And if we replace the truth with a scap soil moisture, we get this equation here, which means the RR value evaluated using a scat. And after some math, we find that this term is equivalent to this uh, left term. And if we compare the two equations, we find that the RR value evaluated using a scat is identical to, to the true RR value. It means that based on a scat or any independent soil moisture product, we can evaluate the, the true soil moisture uh, contribution by data simulation, uh, the true data simulation contribution to the soil moisture estimates at a global scale. And here is the result. And the red area means that data simulation significantly benefit the soil moisture estimates. And the blue area means uh, data simulation may degrade the original open loop run. And we find clearly that over data rich regions, for example, the North America, Europe, and the Southeast of China, and also the Eastern coast of Australia, SMAP data simulation has very limited value. This is because over these regions, the input meteorological forcing data is very accurate. As a result, the open loop run is also highly accurate and uh, it's very hard for us to further benefit, you benefit open loop run using data simulation. In fact, if we do something wrong with our data simulation, we are very likely to degrade the original open loop run. Therefore, we need to be very careful when we do data simulation over data rich regions. And uh, of course, in data sparse regions, for example, Africa, the Central uh, Asia, and also the Central Australia, data simulation has a lot of uh, added value for soil moisture estimates. This is because over these regions, the input of the meteorological forcing data is not accurate. As a result, the open loop uh, runs has a lot of error, and the which we can uh, which can be filtered out by SMAP data simulation. And of course, we can look at that map in a different way. And if we can, uh, if we uh, combine the pixels according to their distances to the uh, ring gauges. And the left is the data rich regions, and the right is data sparse regions. And we find a positive relationship between the contribution of SMAP data simulation to the distance to the gauge. And this is consistent with our previous slide. And we can do the same thing for NDVI, and we find a negative relationship. And this is also uh, totally making sense, with, and also is expected. And this is because in a highly dense uh, vegetated area, the soil moisture information in SMAP is partly masked by vegetation. Therefore, SMAP data simulation over these regions are not that effective. And this figure further highlights the contribution of our analysis. The black curve here is the global cumulative, contribu uh, uh, cumul uh, cumulative uh, distribution of the distance of a pixel to the nearby ring gauges. And the zero means data rich regions, and the going, to the going to the right means data sparse regions. And we find that all the uh, dense soil motion networks, which are the red circle here, are located in data rich regions, which is only representative of 20% of the globe. This means that we can simply now sample uh, the contribution of SMAP data simulation over data sparse regions, for example, Africa, uh, Asia, and also Central Australia. This means that, so the previous ground-based uh, evaluation analysis are very likely to be biased and low. And in the future analysis, we need uh, you see two observations in data sparse regions. And there's something very uh, cool to see is that uh, our analysis can directly benefit the future uh, level four system development and the probably also for the general land data simulation development. And in this case, uh, in the newest map level four uh, product, they use the uh, CPCU gauge data to correct the SMAP level for uh, precipitation input. And of course, we can evaluate the contribution of such correction. And uh, uh, red, our yellow areas means that 
the precipitation correction have a positive benefits and the gray area means that no correction was performed. And the blue area means that a gauge-based correction degrees the SNAP level four product. And we find that in the central Australia, uh, the gauge-based correction strongly degrees soil moisture estimates. And this means that the gauge observations in the central, central Australia is not as good as we thought. And our approach provides a objective way to pinpoint where we should improve and what other factors we should improve. Okay, some conclusions. And in this analysis, we provide a simple but a robust uh, method to evaluate the global scale data summation contributions. And uh, in this case, I'm working on soil moisture, but of course, I believe it can working on any data summation system and the variable of interest. And we demonstrate that uh, the previous uh, ground-based evaluation results are very likely biased because we can now sample data sparse regions. And uh, of course, uh, based on our results, we also suggest that we need to be very careful in data-rich regions because anything wrong with data simulation system, we are likely to degrade the open loop runs. And as for the data sparse regions, we need to improve the pre precipitation quality. And our method is demonstrated useful for improving future land data simulation development. Thank you very much.